This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Chapter 12 deals with non-financial performance measures. This is a very important area of the syllabus. It comes up in almost every exam. And there are four models that you have to know because these come up fairly regularly in the exams. First of all, why is non-financial performance measurement important? We, as accountants, tend to think that finance tells us everything or financial statements tell us everything, but that's far from the case. And here are five reasons why pure financial measurement may not uh, be good enough for performance management. The first is short-termism. Uh, financial statements come up for, or produce for really for no lesser period than a year uh, and, and well, no greater period than a year is really what's important. So what we are able to do is perhaps to boost this year's profits. We could cut back research and development. We could cut back on training. We could back, cut back on maintenance. All that will boost this year's profits, but is laying up trouble in the future for us. Secondly, internal focus. We tend to be consumed with what were our costs, what are our costs compared to budget, what was our idle time, what was our efficiency, and, and, and the like. Now, undoubtedly, I'm not saying to ignore all of these, but it might also be interesting to see, well, what are our competitors doing, what are our customers think about us, what's our reputation, what's happening in the market. Manipulation of uh, results. We only have to, and, and, and this, this, uh, I'm going to touch to that on short-termism, uh, maximizing this year's results at the expense of future years. But manipulation of results, uh, uh, moving expenditure from one year to the next, fiddling about with budgets. Uh, we had, at the time of recording, a recent scandal which broke over Tesco, where it was revealed that about a quarter of its profits seem to stem from manipulation of results dealing with the way it was handling rebates from its suppliers. A partial understanding of the position. Because you make good profits and because your profits increase, that of itself does not explain how or why profits have increased. What is the, the cause, a real push behind you to allow these profits to increase? And if we don't understand that, then we don't know really what to do in the future. We're more relying on luck. And finally, financial results are usually backward looking. How did we do it last month? How did we do year to date? How did we do last year? Rather than uh, focusing where we should perhaps be focusing much more, not exclusively, but much more, and that is looking into the future. Okay, the next uh, slide. Uh, and looks at uh, one of the models. This is Fitzgerald and Boone's building blocks. And they said that good performance depends on the following, or, or performance ought to be good along all of these types of fronts, really. We do need good financial performance. If you don't have good financial performance, you're going to run out of money. You're going to find it very difficult to raise capital you are going to uh, alienate your uh, shareholders and other investors. But really below that uh, come some of the reasons, some of the supporting blocks almost, uh, as to why we maybe get good financial performance. So we need good competitive performance. So for example, uh, our cost per unit maybe ought to be at least matching what our main competitors are doing our service standards. If we say we're going to be able to deliver this in two days, uh, then that has to be in kind of in line again with what our competitors are doing. The range of goods which we hold in our stores, again, has to compete uh, with other stores. So we need good competitive performance if we're going to get on to good financial performance. Good quality. Increasingly, quality has become very important. Uh, nowadays, when you buy a phone or an iPad or a car, 
any consumer product, really we don't expect it to, to break down. And we expect the big brands to promise quality. And quality in many ways is seen as driving success in brands. Why is it that Apple is so successful when it is perhaps selling goods which are more expensive than rough equivalents? Well, it has a great reputation for quality, the quality of the design, the quality of the interface. Flexibility. Can we respond quickly to changes in the marketplace, changes in technology? Increasingly, nothing stands still. Uh, you only have to look, say, at the way electric cars have progressed. Ten years ago, there was barely an electric car around. Now, all of the main manufacturers are uh, launching these cars. They still have some way to go, maybe to be improved. But they have uh, uh, responded to changes in technology and perhaps changes in customer taste and what customers want. Resource utilization, and this is obviously going to lead directly into financial performance. But are we using our people properly? Are we getting sufficient use out of our machinery? Are we getting sufficient use out of our research scientists uh, to innovate, to allow us to launch new products? And of course, there is at the bottom almost supporting all of this innovation. We might be the best now. We might have the most up-to-date product now. But all of our competitors will be snapping at our heels. And it won't be very long before one of our competitors launches a product which is better than ours. Uh, and then our financial performance will ultimately begin to fall. So good and successful innovation and enough money spent in innovation is vital to the continued financial performance of organizations. So those are the dimensions of performance. And if we have dimensions of performance, places where we must perform well, then what you must have are ways of measuring how well you've got on. And these are the KPIs, the key performance indicators. So if you're saying we need to be uh, competitive, our competitive performance needs to be good, you need to measure it. You need to measure your own and you need to compare it. You need to benchmark it against your uh, uh, opponents' uh, uh, performance. Similarly, in innovation, that's ultimately supporting the long-term success of the business. We need to measure innovation. We need to set budgets. We need to measure how we get on. We need to compare ourselves against other companies to see if we are, for example, bringing out new products at roughly the same speed that they are. <clears throat> the standards for the KPIs, first of all, the people... Uh, to whom you give them must feel they own them, uh, that they can, in a way, influence these KPIs, that they are something which they have the, the, the relevant, they have the power to, 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 to achieve or kind of not to achieve. They have to be seen as achievable because if the KPI is seen as being too difficult, uh, the risk is that people give up. They say, no matter how hard I work, I'm not going to get this, I may as well not try at all. And finally, fairness. If, uh, let us say, there was a kind of global catastrophe, uh, if uh, um, uh, there was some problem with supplies and you couldn't produce the goods you wanted to, then you would expect some sort of allowance, particularly when you are judging people uh, and maybe coming to uh, give performance-related bonuses, uh, you would have to say, well, you couldn't produce all these goods because there's a real problem getting hold of raw materials for six months. Therefore, you didn't produce the profits we thought you did, but you, under the circumstances, you tried really well. So you want a, a kind of a, a flexibility uh, there to, to endow us with fairness. And then if the KPIs, the performance or the achievement of the KPIs, is linked to bonuses and rewards, these rewards have to show clarity. We must see the relationship between, if I do this, this is the reward I'm going to get. If it's obscure, if it just seems to be an arbitrary gift from your manager, uh, then you begin to lose really the relationship between uh, your activity, what you achieve, and what you're going to get. So it has to be understandable. 
It has to be a reward that is going to motivate you. It has to be something which you want. And it has to be something which you think you can achieve. And it has to be controllable by you. There is no point in giving people bonuses or withholding bonuses if uh, you're doing that on the basis of some sort of performance which they've got no hope of controlling. The second model is uh, the balanced uh, scorecard of Kaplan and Norton. This was developed really as a way of judging how good companies were as long-term investments. Uh, and it can be turned around now really to say if you are going to be a successful long-term company, you must exhibit this balanced scorecard. And you need to think of it as a hierarchy. So ultimately, what we're aiming for is good financial performance. That's the financial perspective. We can measure that with uh, indicators like share price, earnings per share, return on capital employed, gross profit percentage, perhaps. But none of that, and no matter how good your earnings per share is, None of that tells us how we achieved good financial performance. And the first thing they look to is the customer perspective. And they're really saying that good financial performance relies directly on happy customers. Customers are your only source of revenue. They don't keep coming back to you. If they're not prepared to give you a good price for what you're selling. You will never get good financial performance. So if it is important to have happy customers, then you must find a way of measuring that. There's no point in just kind of hoping that it's going to be there. So how might we measure it? Well, perhaps repeat orders. Uh, we might be able to uh, do customer surveys to see if they're happy with us. Sales growth of itself is a reasonable indicator of customer satisfaction. Quite often when you sign on with a, a new supplier, they will say, how did you hear about us? And what they love to hear is when you say, well, I heard about you because I was recommended by another customer. Why are customers happy with this? And uh, that is because we do well what we say we're going to do. We fulfill our mission uh, or we fulfill uh, our, what we proclaim we're going to do for you. So for some organizations, customers are happy because we have a low cost per unit. And if that's why they come to us, they're in some mass kind of production uh, uh, business and they need components from us that have got a very low cost per unit, that's what they're looking out for. And that's what we need to measure. In some other businesses, let's say I was a component manufacturer and I was supplying the, the airline business, the aircraft build, uh, building business, what they will be interested in is fantastic quality because if the component goes wrong in an airline or an aircraft, then there's catastrophe. So why they would be coming to us, what will make them happy is for us to give fantastic quality and, uh, and dependability of production. So whatever we proclaim to do, and it's always getting back to the value chain, how is it that we add value for our customers? That's what we need to do well. That's what we need to measure, uh, and the sort of measures we might have would be time to deliver. Uh, how many times do people come to us and the goods are not on the shelf? Uh, how many quality issues are there? How many rejections are there? And so on. And finally, although we're doing well what we do now, uh, as I said before in Fitzgerald and Moon, nothing stands still. We might be the top of the heap now in terms of really good performance, but all of these competitors will be hungry for equal success. And if we don't keep innovating and learning, uh, then we're going to fall behind. So if innovation is important, you must measure it. For example, set budgets and measure number of new products bought to the market. Or we could set measures uh, about number of patents which have been registered. In terms of learning, we can think of this as staff learning. We can keep records and set budgets of the number of staff who have undergone certain training courses, achieved certain qualifications and the like. It's interesting that ultimately financial perspective rests on this ultimate foundation of innovation and learning. And of course, this ensures, we hope, that people are not short term because innovation and learning is often a long term 
process. It can take years to bring new products to the market. But we know if we don't do that, then financial perspective, financial performance is doomed. The performance pyramid of Lynch and Cross, slightly more uh, complicated, uh, perhaps, to, to understand. Uh, but what it is uh, looking at here is we start at the top of the organization. Let's see if I can get my pen writing on this here. We start with the, the, the top of the organization here, and we have a corporate vision. And what we do is we say, right, the, the corporate vision which we have will be achieved uh, provided we please the market, we produce goods which please the market. Uh, so we're going to be marketing goods, and what we're going to be doing is ensuring and measuring customer satisfaction. Something else that we have to look at in the market is we have to look at flexibility. Markets keep changing, products keep changing, we have to keep innovating and so on. So flexibility in what we're producing when we produce it is going to be important. What makes customers satisfied? Well, there will be elements like the quality of the goods and the delivery time of the goods. So what we want to produce for our customers are good quality goods uh, delivered on time. Uh, these are the goods that people want and they want a certain amount of flexibility as well. What's important to us, kind of internal efficiency, this was external effectiveness in a way keeping our customers happy. The internal efficiency here is really saying, well, um, and what's important for us to measure internally to achieve that. So cycle time must be kept down. In other words, say flexibility, for example. So flexibility here is leading to delivery. But as you go up on the right-hand side, we're going to be going up here. Cycle time, being able to produce new products quickly or to change your uh, what you're making on the production line quickly is going to be important to flexibility. We need to keep waste down. Uh, and both cycle time and waste is going to uh, improve our productivity. Our productivity improves our financial performance, and our financial performance is ultimately going to help us to achieve our corporate vision. So the way to think about this is going down really the left-hand side, down towards what the customers want, and then as you come up here, Delivering what the customers want eventually help us to get good financial performance and to realize a corporate vision.